Hello, kids. Imagine with me for a moment that the year is 360 BC. You're a young Athenian student who has witnessed the brilliant world of Greek philosophy. Empedocles recently discovered that plants have sex, then jumped into a volcano to prove he was a god. Heraclitus buried himself in cow manure and was devoured by dogs. But you were on your way to see someone even more legendary. You were heading to the academy to hear Plato, the discoverer of eternal donkiness, lecture. However, as you're walking through the marketplace, you hear someone whisper behind you psst, psst. you turn and make prolonged eye contact with a naked homeless man masturbating you scream and your eyes start bleeding but he grabs you and pulls you close to whisper in your ear it's okay to eat human flesh you may be thinking to yourself gosh dang it this is why i moved out of california but what if i told you that you just met one of the greatest philosophers of all time his name is Diogenes. You run for your life to the safety of the academy. That was a close one. Who knows what other strange secret pearls of wisdom you could have been exposed to. Your heart rate starts to calm down as you hear the sweet, familiar voice of Plato. The lecture today is about what human beings are. Human beings are featherless bipeds. Just then, the same naked guy bursts through the door with a poor chicken who's had all its feathers plucked out and throws it on the ground, screaming, Behold, Plato's man! The chicken's flopping around, Plato's crying because his whole theory is in shambles, while well, all you can think is, wow, he just might be a genius. Who was Diogenes? Diogenes was an exile from Sinope. He lived on the streets of Athens in a bathtub and lived as frugally as possible. All he carried around was a little knapsack. It is said that one of his only possessions was a bowl for water until he saw a kid drinking water out of his hands and decided that even the bowl wasn't necessary. It is said that on one occasion while eating dried figs, he ran into Plato and said, Let me share them with you. Plato accepted the offer and proceeded to eat all of them. Diogenes said, I said you could share them, not eat them all. These events precipitated a bitter feud. It is said that when Diogenes was invited to Plato's house, he started trampling on his carpets and said, I trample on Plato's property. It was devastating revenge. When Plato was discoursing about the forms and used the word tablehood and cuphood, Diogenes said, For my part, Plato, I can see a table and a cup, but not tablehood and cuphood. To which Plato replied, And that makes sense, since you have the eyes with which to see a cup and a table, but not the mind with which to comprehend tablehood and cuphood. Diogenes let it be known that Plato's discourses were a waste of time. He often tried to distract people from Plato's discourses by eating loudly in the audience. Another time, Plato said, You are acting like a dog, Diogenes. Rather than being offended, Diogenes embraced the title and decided he would behave like a dog. He would walk barefoot in winter and endure all manner of hardships. He even tried to eat raw meat but found he couldn't digest it. This is how he got his title, Diogenes the Cynic, which basically means Diogenes the Dog-like. At dinner, some guests were throwing bones at him, as one would a dog. Accordingly, in the manner of a dog, he urinated on the guests as he was leaving. When someone brought him to a sumptuous house and warned him not to spit, he cleared his throat and spat on the man's face, saying he couldn't find a worse place to leave his spittle. On another occasion, he began shouting, Come this way, fellows! And when people had gathered excitedly to hear his philosophical wisdom, he attacked them with a staff, saying, It was men I was calling for, not trash. Diogenes took his role of a philosopher very seriously. He often participated in debates. When in a debate someone asserted that motion did not exist, Diogenes stood up and walked around. Another devastating demonstration of his intellectual superiority. One day he spent an entire day begging a statue for money. When someone asked him why, he said it was because he was practicing rejection. Another time he spent an entire day walking through the streets with a candle as if he was desperately searching for something. When someone asked him why, he said, he's searching for an honest man. Another time Diogenes launched into a speech saying, People exert themselves to outdo one another when exercising at the gymnasium, but make no effort when it comes to strengthening their character. Scholars investigate Odysseus's failings, but remain unaware of their own. Musicians take the trouble to tune their lyres, but leave their souls in a discordant state. Mathematicians gaze at the sun and moon, but ignore what lay at their feet. And orators exert themselves to speak about justice, but don't practice it. Another time his quotes were more like, To get through life one needed either reason or a noose. Or it is not the deaf and the blind who are impaired, but those who have no knapsack. Dang. 
Despite his public indecency, random acts of violence, and covering people in his bodily fluids, Diogenes was very much admired by the Athenians. When a young man broke Diogenes' tub, they gave the boy a flogging in front of him and presented Diogenes with a new tub. Meanwhile, Alexander the Great's friend approaches him and says, Hey dude, I know you're busy conquering the known world, but there's this philosopher named Diogenes you have to meet. Oh really? What kind of little philosophies does he do? I'm not sure, but he masturbates in public and lives in a bathtub. Whoa. Let me remind you this is Alexander the Great, the scariest man on the planet. Imagine for a moment that you were a poor citizen in the ancient world who lived in a reality filled with mythology. You kind of believe in myths, but not really. You believe in monsters like Catholics believe in satanic possession. Anyway, you're a poor farmer boy who has aspirations to be a poet. You have a beautiful family and you just met the love of your life. Things are actually working out for you and you have a bright future ahead of you. I know it's hard for you specifically to imagine this, but just try your best. Then one day you get drafted and the next thing you know, you're standing on the front lines with your best friends as Alexander the Great's army is approaching. Your best friend Timmy is like, don't worry, we're gonna make it through this. Then all of a sudden a war elephant comes out of nowhere. You've never heard of an elephant, so you're thinking this is a literal monster spawned from the underworld with a giant nose-like thing and a humongous spear-sized tusk protruding from its face. You just look at your military commander for help and he screams, hold the line, as a five-ton monster that you can only assume eats people comes barreling full speed at you and your friends. Timmy is screaming, on the ground and you just hold up your wooden shield and pray to the gods then by divine chance the elephant running towards you turns around completely and goes barreling towards alexander's own army killing a couple dozen of them which happened quite often for a brief moment you have hoped that you're going to make it out alive you're convinced that the gods are real and answered your prayers because after all monsters are apparently real then all of the sudden alexander the great himself comes sprinting full speed towards you on the front lines with no regard for his own safety because he actually thinks he's the son of Zeus and invincible. You're next, so in a last ditch effort, you thrust your spear and stab Alexander the Great in the shoulder before he can reach you. You did it. You conquered the greatest conqueror of all time, and hope returns, but Alexander just pulls the spear out of his body. It turns out Alexander has been maimed to near fatality in combat multiple times now, but apparently he actually is invincible or something, so he just decapitates you and continues fighting. That's who Alexander Alexander the Great was. When Diogenes was laying in the sun, Alexander came up to him and said, I am Alexander, the great king. Diogenes replied, I am Diogenes, the dog. How did you get that nickname, the dog? I fawn on those who give me something, bark at those who don't, and bite the wicked. Oh, that's cool, I guess. Ask whatever you desire, to which Diogenes replied, Stand out of my light, Alexander said. Had I not been Alexander, I would like to have been Diogenes. If I were not Diogenes, I also would want to be Diogenes. At this point, Diogenes' fame was hitting an all-new level. When invited to dinner, he said he would not go since last time around he had not been thanked. He knew his worth. Unfortunately, now people started targeting him. One guy actually attacked him, saying, Most people laugh at you. To which he replied, and perhaps donkeys laugh at them, but they pay no heed to donkeys, nor do I pay heed to them. Another man called Diogenes out for his past. You see, Diogenes was exiled for financial crimes. I know that's the last thing you would have guessed from this degenerate, but as a youth, he decided to restamp the currency with his father. This was a bit of a sore spot, and people started exploiting it, reproaching him for his crimes, to which he replied, I did so at a time when I was the sort of man that you are now, but the sort I am now you will never be. And to someone else who reproached him for the same reason, he said, I also used to wet my bed, but not anymore. The funniest thing about these snarky comebacks is not what they are, but the fact that they recorded nearly a hundred of them and that they survived throughout history. None of Democritus' major works were saved, and he was an incredibly impactful philosopher. But Diogenes behaves like a sassy dog and his stuff survives, and people even eventually build multiple statues to him out of bronze. When asked what the most beautiful thing in the world was, he said, freedom of speech. Seeing a woman who had been hanged from an olive tree, he said, would that all trees bore such fruit. That one's a little, uh, yikes. He said, most people fall short of being insane by a finger's breadth. 
to an effeminately dressed boy who asked him a question. Diogenes said he would not reply unless the fellow pulled up his clothes and showed whether he is a woman or a man. At some point, Diogenes was captured by pirates and sold into slavery. At the auction, he announced, Speak the word in case anyone wants to buy himself a master. When some guy purchased him, he said, Be sure to do what I tell you. Diogenes was a living criticism of the cultural conventions of Athens through his action rather than his theory. He turned frugality and simplicity into virtues, and he was a new voice in the world of philosophy, a new dramatic statement on how to live well. There are many theories on how Diogenes died. Some say he choked on an octopus, some say he was bitten by a dog and died. Others say that one day Diogenes just decided he was tired of living, so he held his breath until he died. His final instruction to his friends was to throw him out unburied so that every wild beast might feed on him. Thus, our philosopher came to an end. If you enjoyed this video and want to help out a small channel, consider liking this video and leaving a positive comment below. I appreciate you guys. Bye.